Oh, the animation's not going to work either. No, whatever. We're back. <laughs> Usually there's an animation there. It looks real cool. Looks no, real cool. not doing it. Not whatever. Happening. Whatever. Northern Angler, imagine a trout. Whatever. <laughs> we're just going right to the main. Oh, it's not going to work. What are we on? Oh, we're on the main. Okay, we're there. <laughs> there's no technical issues here. what technical issues i don't know what anyone's talking about i don't know but technical issues I solved <laughs> oh that was fun thank no, you everyone fun. who hung out and and waited there nice that's that's some good sound effects right there i can't even do that on the soundboard so oh thank you all for hanging out um oh. It'll be worth it, I promise. Uh, Brian had time to go buy more beer. <laughs> well, I was a little stressed out, Matt. I mean, uh, you know, this this whole thing. Yeah. The the whole live thing and the technical difficulties. Uh, I know. Man, you just I never know. know. You never know. I had so. a rough day on the river. You know, fish didn't want to cooperate. No. But we got one. In the bottom of the ninth. I'm on the night. But you know what the best thing about today is? We have Russ Madden. I know. Right here. <laughs> right at the there. Northern England. Right there. Right there. there he Russ is. Madden. Right here. In house. One of my all-time favorite fly buddies ever. Right? Yeah. Dude, right. we've had some crazy times. Absolutely. And uh, so Bef happy to have you here. And Brooke, thank you for, you know, for being bringing so him. awesome <laughs> to Russ. <laughs> So. We're so happy. Yeah. And and Russ is going to actually debut a new fly tonight. So we're super excited. This is our last live fly time for the season. Yep. So I was just going down to buy beer. and <laughs> As uh, one does. <laughs> as, when. Because when, when stuff hits the fan, it's time to go buy some more beer. It is. And uh, so I decided I need another six-pack. And not that I had a six-pack. But anyway... And the birds are singing. There's like red winged blackbirds out there. There are robins. Spring is in the air. Spring. I did see robin. Yes. Brian just had his birthday on yeah. Monday. Yeah, so did. let's all wish. I mean, I'm 39. I don't think we can convince 39. Russ to sing happy birthday, but <laughs> <laughs> that'd be. I, I did get a birthday steelhead. Did you? That's pretty good. No, yeah. <laughs> with you. Yeah. I did it was get a day brown before. Try. It was, that was a win. Uh, Eddie so. got one on my birthday. So there you anyway, go. It's like, my client today got one on his birthday. That's good. Seventy nine years old. Seventy nine years young. Seventy nine years young. Well, fresh off the ice season, uh, we have our good friend Russ Madden here. He sadly put away all of his ice gear. Yeah, it's always a sad day. You want to like, you know, it's like the band. It's like the the last waltz. It's the you know. The night they drove old Dixie down. Oh. It's 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 a sad, <laughs> sad state of affairs. But you look back for on ice, the struggle sticks. You look for ice when it like like November. Oh yeah. You're like no, first I walk ice. over there and throw a little pebble at it, see if it'll go through. We've had some ice fishing stories. Remember we were out of that lake? Oh, yeah, that, that that time. <laughs> that, that one that time. One time. Yeah, that, that was, was listed in my first divorce papers. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Crap, true. It was true. Not lie. Not a lie. That oh is not gosh. a lie. And and I if I remember the deputies that came over looking for our body somewhere <laughs> when they were actually firmly on our buckets out on the lake. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. thought we were only going to be gone for a half an hour ice fishing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Who, how, just, does that how does happen? that even? You can't, like, even you can't even like <laughs> drill your holes in half an hour. Anyway, so what do we have going tonight, Ross? I'm so well, excited. Since the, the whole spring thing came around and I actually saw a robin the other day, I said, you know, last year and the year before, I had this little fly that I've been running and... It's a, basically, it's a crawler imitation, but you can use it for any other thing. I got a whole variety of samples here. But What do you mean by crawler? Is this a night crawler? It's imitation? a night crawler. Like a like a K and E like a cra like, a, like waltz like crawler. Are we like talking waltz crawlers? I am Canadian crawler. crawler. <laughs> like you walk did... around with your bare foot and feel them on the bottom of the thing in the heavy rain. Yeah, yeah. and they come like, out and, you and go they pick hit them. that concrete. Right. You're you're you better get out there. All right. You, you might actually miss it if it, if they already hit the concrete. <laughs> I always say that that's like the greatest day in the world is when those crawlers hit the concrete. That's when you know spring oh, is you, really you here. know it. And as soon as you see those robins, really, because they know more than we do. You know? They do. Surprisingly. They're a, 
they're a little more focused, yeah. I think, than we they are. Know maybe. That it, they know the thaw's coming. Yeah. They know the thaw's coming. Yeah. They feel that shelf ice receding. <laughs> You know. <laughs> but you got to get the ladder out to get to your spot. Right. It's actually time to throw in the old towel. All right. We're excited for some crawler. Fly. All right. So, so yeah, we're going to do a crawler. I'm going to basically do that fly. I don't think anyone saw a crawler fly coming. No. You know, I and, mean. And it, those of you who assume that this is some really sort of San Juan crawler. worm thing, you know, no. Like, no, this it's is, actually a pretty cool no, fly. It's a pretty There's cool fly. There's a lot of ways to so. tie it. It's a very diverse fly. It goes in my box all the time till about, you know, I'll even run them as like a lamprey. It's very easy to tie, very guide friendly. You can place a few in some wood heaps and, you know, you know, not worry about it. Um, basically, well, I'm going to start out just for a baseline. I'm going to do like a size, it's a tandem fly, but you can use a shank if you want. You can use a shank off the back and make it a single. So choose um, your own adventure fly. Yeah, really you can. There's, there's a lot of diverse ways to tie these. I got a bunch of different kinds of head styles on them, different weighting systems. But that's what I'm all about is, you know, especially when you're guiding the streamer bit, you got to have a diverse. If your fly is diverse enough, you can adapt it to not only the conditions, but even lines, places in a river, locations. So it's it's this is a very very diverse fly. It's actually uh, been a pretty big standard in my box for a few years, ever since they came out with the voodoo stuff and the barred mirror, barred flashaboo. You'd use either one of these, and you actually can use anything. I got a few that I just you know made a minnow style out of too. So you can actually use anything for the tail. I'll kind of go into it uh, as a baseline. I'm gonna do like a size one. Uh, we'll do a two four. Uh, A-Rex TP605, uh, both two and fours. Uh, start off with the smaller hook first. So we got the four up in, in the Renzetti here. I like that red. You've gotten some compliments already. Oh, yeah, the red. That's good. the that red uh, special That's edition Traveler. Yeah, There's nice. three colors right now. And you know what? These little bit smaller flies, too, is I'm just going to give another little plug to the Renzetti crew. Th these, the shank vice here is actually awesome when they're doing smaller hooks. That's the, the game changer jaw. It's the changer the, jaw in yep. there. And it's very, very nice for four, sixes, your smaller streamer, smaller tandem stuff. Really a, a great, it's been a huge asset for me because I like tying those smaller flies on it. Really makes a difference. I, I told Lily the same thing at the show. I said that jaw is great for oh, it's for access to the back of the hook and shanks. Excellent. And, yeah. I mean, in in a lot of you know, especially nowadays in these waters up here, they're pretty low. We have low water up here, and you know, a lot of our flies are getting smaller. And this has just made it a little bit easier with this cutout on the changer jaw. Made it really nice. Anyway, any rate, I'm going to start off with some buck hair. I believe you guys have some of Wessa stuff here. We, we do. do. You can uh, awesome you can Midwest. come into the shop and find it. I yeah, don't have it online great, yet. It's but awesome stuff. It's got some really unique colors. Yeah, really a pretty cool product. Midwest Bucktails. You get it right here at the Northern Angler. So I'm going to take a little piece of buck here and I'm going to put it off the back end of my 605. I'm going to wrap that in there. And what this is going to do is form a stiffening agent. I always just throw a few locks in there. And that keep keep your buck hair in there. So it doesn't fall apart. It's a good little trick. And a durability thing. Makes it a little easier when the guys are... T when I'm trying to pull one out of a guy's jacket from a bad cast. What we'll do here is we'll take a little bit of voodoo fiber. Voodoo. And you can mix these colors. But I like, obviously, I'll run a crawler color. So I'm going to do like a dark underneath and a lighter one on top. It's a synthetic tail, so you can pretty much cut it and put it wherever you want. I'm going to lay that on there. And what that does is that buck hair kind of supports that tail. So it doesn't foul? So it doesn't foul up, correct. And I'll do a fold over here so I don't pull my material off. It's, again, it's kind of a durability thing, like when you're removing it from your customer's jacket. or 
the back your of customers, their hat. Yeah, customer's buddy hooked them in the back. You don't pull your whole fly apart on the first go. You just bend your hook back and remove the fleece particles from your hook. <laughs> so you're using two different colors? Yeah, I'm going to do two different colors. There's like a variegated brown and a variegated orange. But like I said, any... Basically, I'm using this as the voodoo fibers, but you can actually use any type of flashaboo, crystal flash. Choose uh, your own adventure again. Yeah, any anything that would resemble something that you, you know, olives, blacks. I got a black one over here I did, a couple white. I did a white one, some tan. Because it's really about the weighting system and the types of lines that you run, but this has been a very easy crawler pattern for me and again when you're tying these smaller ones like on the the two four here don't want to make this thing way back here because you'll just even though it's a very light fly and the fish will nine times out of ten get the whole thing you don't want to make that too long so now i'm going to make a body to it and again i'm using this semper fly extreme string but you can use variegated chenille, you can use estaz, you can use basically any material you can wrap around a hook. This is the guide fly. Sitting there eating beans and weenies in a trailer in Baldwin, you can tie this fly with whatever the guy has there. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Beans Brooke, and weenies. Brooke in is off camera just trying <laughs> to snort and laugh. Hey, dude, and beans and weenies. We did eat a lot of beans and weenies when we lived in Baldwin, and uh, there were some ramen noodles. Yeah, right. And uh, right. And sometimes we would make spaghetti with venison. Oh my yeah, gosh, right. it was that's weird, awesome. Little large. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, it's big time. Stuff. I remember the days of just canned like spaghettios and chili, and you put the can right on the burner. Good right. times. Yeah, good times. Put it, put it on your ice fish and put it on your little buddy heater. <laughs> Yeah. Cook up some man soup. <laughs> Put it under the hood on your drive. Remember when we used to just heat up the soup in the cans? Yeah, the river? yeah man soup. That's, that's right. The, you know, that's what Brooke calls it, man soup. That's like the Campbell's that's thick right. and hearty, whatever. It could eat it with a fork or Heart eat attack it with a in a can. Yeah. <laughs> hey. But anyway, right, so what you'll end up with, that, that extreme string gives you a little bit of texture. But again, if you wanted something a little bit, Ooh. You know, last you can use, uh, you know, the, the chenilles or the estas. Got polar anything. chenille yeah. there. Yeah. Sure, it looks like chenille. about the same length as a standard right polar yeah. UV polar chenille. And what I right? like to do if I'm doing these longer fibers is I'll cut my rear one down a little bit, like in half. You know, probably a third off the top. So when I'm wrapping it, I'll have uh, you know it's a little thinner toward the back. Pretty pretty basic there. Whiting. I got the, the dig back. camera on. <laughs> huh? Yeah. What? Was it like giving people, do you guys got to have Dramamine for that? <laughs> no, it's looking good, Russ. You're doing great. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I added a, a fourth camera because everybody wanted to see what was going on on the desk. So. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. So I just found like kind of a cool looking one from Whiting. You know, this is like a barred kind of burnt orangey and I'll mix up the colors a little bit. So it, you know, blends in a little different. And you know, that it, when that water starts coming out of that, you know, these rivers up here in Northern Michigan, it does get a little bit tannic there, especially when it's around those swamps. The swamps are getting ready to bust loose. Right. So when that ice, shelf pack. ice starts going, there's not a lot of snow. There's not a lot of ice. Been kind of a crummy ice season. Made the best of it the past few weeks, though. But this color really lights it up out there. You know, yellows, coppers, a little bit of burnt orange. That stuff really works good this time of year. And then, you know, if you, do a, if you decide to make a little bit bigger one, let's say you wanted to do a chestnut, you probably lean more toward that olive. Right. But like I said, you can totally diversify this pattern. Uh, I know some guys that I've introduced this pattern to run these for small mouse and make them, you know, on like a one-aught one and have pretty good success with it. Or do a one-aught with a 
25 millimeter shank. And that's, it's a very diver, very easy fly to tie. So all I did there was collar that feather there and I'll produce the rear end of my hook there. And Russ, that's the American hen. Is that yeah, right? It's an American. I just wanted hen. to check. Yeah. But any of the, any hen back, any schlopping, any rooster, any, you know, boogie boogie patch that you can find that'll work, you know, is a good one. When do you think the lamprey hatch is going to happen this year, Russ? Like, can That's you give a good us a question. Date? I would say that if, if I'm planning like a temperature range, because I always plan the temperature range, because you can't say, oh, yeah, May 8th. No, um, you can. You, you <laughs> could say that. I, can't, I could say what I like, don't like fishing, but I'll, I will say... You know, like that 46-ish, 45, you know. That's when the lamprey really starts. 40-something, mid-40s to early 50s, a little bit after, you'll start seeing them pretty pretty good. Your sculpins probably are, you're going to spawn first, you know, earlier than that, and the crawlers are going to cut loose before all that. So there's still a ways to go and and cycles of these rivers. But So let's slow down. Let's back it up a little bit here. So what we're talking about <laughs> is in the springtime in northern Michigan, we have all these activities that happen as the swamps start to break loose. Right. Right? Yeah. So kind of what's the progression in your mind, Russ? Like when we're when you're talking about streamer fishing, we're talking about the, the night crawlers, we're right. talking about lampreys, we're talking about, you know, sculpins. Right. So this right? is this is all pretty pretty key stuff here. Um First thing we're looking for is like the shelf ice and the, things like that on a river, right? So you, where you're going to find your shelf ice is going to be in that slower, muckier water, right? Right. So that's the area where a lot of trout I find in certain places in Michigan have a tendency to be in those type of areas where it's slower, where it's warm. And you'll have like a different bottom there. And that bottom, it's not only is it sheltered all winter, but it also has, it'll break loose a little earlier. So have a, it'll have a tendency to produce some crawlers out of those type of areas. And that would be like my first, first bite. So if I'm finding that water starting to come up on these rivers, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that first sign of rising. So when sure. that first sign of rising occurs, and not like rain on top of ice on all that, that doesn't count. You need that water to turn some color you need that color to come up. That tannin that color. Tannin that tannin color. Then you know it's thawed enough for those crawlers to, to start cutting. Right. And you'll see them. I mean, you catch fish in the spring and they'll be impacted with them. Their guts will be bloated out with them. And that's all like in this window of like pre-flood. So like probably within the next two weeks at some sure. point oh, on yeah. some river in Michigan, you're going to have this type of fly is going to be very effective for... X amount of time on each river. And once that crest and fall kind of happens, then you go into the April and you're like, man, I can't catch a fish. Cause because they're they're, cause everything ate. Right. Everything ate. They're, they're so full. They're, they're going to beat your brains against the hills until the water drops you're out. You're going in there a dry fly. right after Thanksgiving dinner. Right, yeah. You you're, know. you're not going to get them after the Chinese buffet. No. Right. Not, it's just not going to happen. They so, don't have a Sands belt right. slacks. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> So, you know, to adjust your adjust your waistline. You know, so you yeah, after that sp after that flood happens, it's pretty rugged territory. Right. It's not very fun to be a streamer dude on a free flowing river from like about April 10th to about trout opener till that water starts fading out again. So, but this this pattern though, I I would would think that it would fish throughout the summer because they are still conditioned to see that and they're like oh well, every now and again oh, yeah. a crawler's gonna break loose oh right? yeah no crawler's always good i mean right. you know pretty much a bazillion fish are caught on crawlers every single year it's kind of like the wish they were but only yeah it's crawler, like right yeah it's like, like it's a thinner profile fly than the circus peanut that's all all right and all right. i tie them a few different ways we'll do the first version you know, right now we'll do uh, some, with a, some lead wrap and some brush. Any rate, we're using 25 pound mono. I always use mono. Um, it's just a little more durable. I don't need wire. I'm not fishing pike. If there's a pike up there, it's completely, you know, out of whack. And I deserve to lose a fly. <laughs> but yeah, 25 pound mono. Doesn't rust, doesn't kink, doesn't fail. Pull the Queen Mary with it. Never going to have a problem if you got 12 or 14 pound 
you know, scientific angler tip I, it out. I need a bell for like the russisms a little bit. Ding, <laughs> ding. <laughs> this like, is who's on the count? <laughs> this is not our syncrasse. No, it's not our syncrasse. You can pull the cre- Queen Mary. <laughs> <laughs> This is not arts and crafts. This is strictly meat and potatoes. This, this is, is tying a fly. Meat potatoes. I used to always say, oh, saving a worm. Literally, I am saving a worm. So, hmm, you, sh- you should call this your Waltz Crawler's Fly. Could be. Any specific beads there or just go to your craft store well, and, or I mean, come see us for some know, 3D beads? There's going to be a, this is a huge deal, by the way. I'll, I'll, I know. Un, I actually, know because you have me order you be weird <laughs> stuff. For, this is like for, a big deal. So it's a really tough lesson to learn with this spacing of these hooks. Because if you screw up on your spacing... Not only did you screw up on your spacing here, you screw up on your fish. You lost them. Because one bead back here versus two can make a difference versus three can make a difference. If you're tying a light fly the way this is, the fish is usually going to get the whole thing. But in terms of millimeters, it's not just about six millimeter fly tying beads anymore. Not in my world it isn't. Because I, you know, this is a two four. I might use two five millimeters. I might use five, you know, three five millimeters. I might use on a size smaller. If I do a four six, I might do a four millimeter bead, two four millimeter beads, three four millimeter beads. So basically, you know, as a rule, standard grassroots campaign, day in day out, I'm using five millimeter beads on hooks that are two four. Once I go to a 1-2, I may use two 6-millimeter beads. And if I go smaller, I will use 4-millimeter beads. Two as a rule. Like I said, these flies can easily be tied with three. Easily. Do you have a fouling problem when they tie with three? No, because I'm tying pretty tight Tight. loops. And I put in the time right now to get this thing exactly the way I want it. Because all I'm saying to myself is, some dude's going to be casting that thing. And, and I don't, don't want, want to, to untangle it. Right. Because first it off, I'm not going to back row while the dude's untangling his fly. That's my fault for tying it that way. That's why I don't like having a bunch of shanks and stuff in there. Because any time that dude's untangling means he's not fishing. What if that's the only active fish in the whole entire float? Right. And I'm soaring past it. And then the guy behind me who doesn't get tangled, who runs a two, two hook fly, who casts at that log, the one fish that's active is there, and I, I would have never known because my dude is like this cat's cradle. Right. So you don't want to have a crystal ball. The two hooks, two beads, never an issue. That's this is if I was going to tie a fly for a trip, probably in the next two weeks, I'd tie it just like this. Two five millimeter beads. Now, upon the first failure, I will fire the two millimeter beads and I will put three on. Or I will do both because, you know, if you're out there, you can't adjust, right? And that ties so few of the same fly. <laughs> you never tie the same yeah, pattern. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> fish already saw it. That's right. You know, if their fish get, if the highs, fish of the highs get as big as saucers, they're never going to eat that thing again anyway. Might as well throw it away. If a guy shoots an arrow over a buck, he's not going to walk under the same tree stand. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right. I don't so know. What, maybe, what? maybe it's like the it's like calling of the dumbest. <laughs> right. You, you, it's the village idiot that comes yeah, right. twice, right? Fish with the pointy hat. <laughs> you know, and the fish with the pointy hats are always there. You know, the war of attrition can always win on the streamer game, too. But you want the alpha Right, fit. right. You it, want the alpha fish. That's not what it's about, though. You know, the war of attrition is not how you go day in, day out streamer fishing. All right, so what we're going to do here on this particular version, it's a more of an animated version. It sits in the column. I'm going to run this, let's say, on a scientific angler type 3 or type 6, Titan tip. I'm not running those full sinking lines in about 100 miles of river anymore. I'm running those lighter lines. Um, the lighter lines are making a difference. Yeah, they really are. They, they deliver better. You can fish them slower. You keep the fly you in the box it. longer. And to be honest, these fish are getting terrified of movement, people. That thing moves too much, and it's it's over. So you might think, oh, a streamer, it's always moving. But that's not true. You're in you know Tennessee, let's say. You're in a big, giant tailwater. You think you're moving that fly. 
but you're moving slack. That's what you're moving. You're that fly is barely moving. Yeah. yeah. So when you're in these little rivers here, you know, you're almost treating these streamers these days in a lot of miles of it. Not all of it, but let's say the upper 40, 50 miles of river, you're basically treating these streamers as though they're a dry fly. And you're drifting them versus fishing them. You're not casting at your cover, you're drifting to the cover. And I'll tell you, when that fish, that fly lands at the top of that hole, that fish already knows it's there. He's either going to eat it or he's not. You're never going to impart a different action onto a fly to make that negative fish eat. It doesn't happen. It's like a switch. When they eat, they eat. If you have something that they're used to eating, you're better off. And that's why this fly comes into play, especially that first blast of water. So they see it. It's kind of like the old Kelly gal. We were kids, like waking right. the sleeping cat. Right. Wait, it's going right. to attack. Right. It's right. right. going to attack or it's not. <laughs> right. So there's a cats? lot of th there's a lot of ways you can add fly tying lead. You can put strips on each side of your front hook. You can wrap it around. You're gonna have that's up to the angler, and this is really what these flies are made for. Is they're made to tie and to fish and to be versatile. So this fly right here, I'm gonna wrap a few wraps. Okay. I'm gonna do probably three or four wraps of the O two O. O two O. I'm gonna You're... put it right in the dead middle. What thread are you using? I run yeah. six out for everything. I put that stuff on every. It's like a Tabasco commercial. Six out. Six out for everything. Everything. Beavis six out. Then I'm going to reattach that extreme string there. And what this will do is it'll give you a nice soft landing to some of these waters. It'll give you a good hover. I'm going to fish this on a, like I said, probably a type three or type six, depending upon I think this would be Condition. a good smallie fly, too. Oh, it is. It is. It works great for him. So when you're talking about type 3 or type 6, you're referring to the Titan sink tip. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to... I'm sure there's people out there curious. That's yes. the sonar Titan sink tip is available in two different sink rates, a type 3 and a type 6. And you want them both. You buy two rods and you put one of them on one and you put the other one on the other and then you put a intermediate on the other and you put a, you know, still, there is no one line that's a streamer line anymore. That doesn't exist. That went away. These things are a huge advantage. So you want to make sure you have a diverse amount of lines, flies, waiting systems, all that. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. If you don't have these, if you go with just hair flies or you go with just lead flies, you'll always be sorry. You'll always be sorry. So you want to make sure you have versatility. And that's where it comes. That's why the vice is so important when it comes to actual streamer fishing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, I mean, it's it's the difference between having one multi-tool for everything or a right. toolbox full of different tools. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm so, trying for my Russism. I'm tied, trying. Tied I'm some close. legs in there. Matt, that was really not bad. Insightful. Good. Good. Analogies. Yeah. Right. I like the analogy. So my Gerber tool doesn't do everything. I should buy Craftsman. Huh. Right. Well, we're not sponsored by a tool company yet. So, yet. So hang on there. I mean, I could be a tool. I am a total tool. But, <laughs> you know. You know. It's okay. All right. So on this, that I also up. left it. If you, in case I didn't mention it, I, I left the front part fully long. I didn't cut anything off of it, just to get that taper thick to thin. Threw a few rubber legs in there. Continued on my way. Hmm. I like it. And I'm gonna find another hackle here. Longer, bigger than the, the first one. I have a little more mustard in the front. More mustard? Is yeah. that like stone ground mustard? More guts. More guts. That spicy mustard. More guts than glory. Right. right. I'm a fan of that Coop's mustard, that spicier Arizona yeah. mustard. Right. Mm. 
No one needed to know that, but... Oh, we needed to know that. <laughs> we did. I know what to get you for Christmas now. <laughs> they probably have a gift pack. The Mustard of the Month Club. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. Merry that, too. Merry Chrysler. <laughs> I like all that stuff. <laughs> we're doing away with bonuses this year, and we're going to do the Mustard of the Month Club. <laughs> That's right. Then I get, you know, people ask me all the time, which way do you wrap? I just wrap based on whatever the feather tells you to do. So that's, if it's going one way. That's been one of feather. my favorite tips you've ever given is just listen to the feather. Yeah, the feather. If the it wants to go material. forward, if it wants to go back, just right. it doesn't matter. Material tells you everything. Yeah. Russ has always been in touch with the materials. Be one with the material. Be one. Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, so this then strong last the force. piece of this. This is a minnow head brush. Now... This is going to sit in that current a little bit. It's going to hover. It's a, there's not a lot of weight on this fly, but I'm going to tell you right now, just as a little side note, there's weight in every good streamer. Doesn't matter if people say, oh, I didn't add weight to it. Yeah, you did. There's two hooks on that thing. There's beads on that thing. There's oogie boogie glue that you go like that with on that thing. All of it's weight. Rubber legs are weight. Beads are weight. Hooks are weight. So there, there's no such thing as an unweighted streamer. Weight on all of it. But this, in case, we did add a little few wraps of O2O to it. We got to get that oogie boogie blue, Matt. Take a. I'm still on the uh, the fish with the pointy hats. Uh, personally, that's oh, yeah. kind of where that's I'm a, at. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, this comes at you fast, ladies and gentlemen. You really have to pay attention here. No, it's like you got to like know the moniker. Disclaimer I mean. with this stuff: don't put a ton of wraps on here. Don't wrap this thing right to the front. You don't want a lot of this. It, so it, two, three wraps. It moves a lot of water. So. Like whatever you think is too much, it is too much. Back it off. It's not like, you know, other materials. Russ, that looks like too much to me. Yeah, it could be. But I think it's just right. All right. Dorothy Slippers, man. What is that? Porridge, right? Emerald. Porridge, right? Emerald City. <laughs> <laughs> Porridge. It's just right. Not too hot. Right. That's what I'm... That's what it is. Three bears, that one. Yeah, that's it. This bed's too soft. I don't this believe that that's too much, Brian. I think it's just right. I know where you're going with that, Ross. I'm going to whip it off. It's a super simple, really nice animated crawler. Whoa. Russ, I thought you were going to do the thing you did oh, one year do, like, at kept going the Franklin. Go. You did about kept going and six going. or eight whip finishes, <laughs> and no one said going. anything, and it just kept going. <laughs> yeah, that's going. right. Was, I, <laughs> no, you're not going to tell me to stop. <laughs> Don't stop. All right, so that's the that's the crawler with the minnow head brush. So that one's going to sit right in that column. Looks hold it, great. hold nah, it down by the, hold it down. Nah, it won't be in focus. It's okay. Hold it right it looks by great. your face. There Bingo. you go. Perfect. Do I took it out prematurely? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. It's all right. It's never happened to you before. <laughs> all right. We're going to do another this version. Not a G-rated. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how you take it. Matt. Ooh. So are you doing another 2-4? I'm doing a two, yeah, I'm staying, sticking with the sticking two Sticking with the two just as, right. a, just as a basic platform, uh, feel free to mess around with this thing, like I said. You can, it's so, just, are you, we get this question a lot. When people come in, and they're like, hey man, I'm tying a tandem fly, you know, so it's a size two, size four in the back. Do you ever do, like, a size two and size ten? No. Okay. Right. I don't. No. <laughs> Absolutely. That's my answer, zero, Nilco. <laughs> So, I always stage one step down, usually. Okay, so one step down. Like, right. that's Alex, a great right. rule. Alex mentioned this a few years ago where it's either one step down most of the time, probably 75%, or the same. Right. But you, what you don't want to have caveat. happen is certain flies that I know that have been designed have different kinds of head designs and have some shanks added in there. And what happens is if the if you're hooking 
85% of your fish on a rear hook, make sure it's a real hook. Don't put a little decorative thing back there. Okay. Because gotcha. all you're going to do is shoot arrows over every fish, and it's going to make the person angry at you who's rowing for five days straight. Or the other way around. Don't put a marlin hook on the front either. Right. You right. put a marlin hook on the front, you're never going to hook them either. So me, I'm a huge fan of light wire hooks. These casts are short here, even when they're long, to be honest. I want that fish to not miss. I don't care the actions. Oh, look at it swim. It's like a... You know, little bait fish in the river. It doesn't matter if everything's eating it and you're not catching them. The fly sucks. Period. Yep. So if a fish farts on that thing, I want to have the fish. Not like, oh, yeah, you sure moved a bunch. Yeah, you know what <laughs> you that got means? got a lot of windows. Shoppers. Yeah, you know what that means? That means I shot arrows over every fish in my stretch and I'll probably never go there again. You you just gave them all an education. Right. Yeah. You worked yep. for PETA. That's what you did. You worked <laughs> you're, for PETA. You're fishing for PETA. You taught those fish to never eat a fly again. Congratulations. You you Thank you. PETA. You've done us all a service. Yeah, you've done great now. Now I'll never eat again and I can never go there to that stretch again. <laughs> To go there in the middle of the damn darkness to catch Good one thing out. I never tie the same fly twice. <laughs> yeah. Right. But even if you had a percent, because that's, you know, some of the faulty situations that I've seen. Right. Big giant front hook. Oh, enormous. Tiny, itty bitty, ditty, ditty, back hook. Why even right. put it back there? I get it. That's... Totally agree with Alex because he's a guide, right? He's a fisherman. He has to do this stuff every day. And he has to get Billy Bob Wichita to catch a fish somehow. Holding the rod upside down in whichever direction, hooking his buddy in the jacket, you know, doing all that bit. Right. So, you know, you either have, like, the same size or one smaller. I like the 2-4. I like right. that 2-4 combination. 2-4 is really convenient for, like, a lot of river, like, it is. 80% of your ensemble. Do you like the 4-6 in lower yeah, water? Yeah, 4-6 I do a lot of, too. And I'll do bigger ones, too. But, you know, you just play with the conditions. Once you start getting down in that middle manistee or middle ensemble, you know, you can up your game to a 1-2. Sure. You know, for sure. And I run a lot of 1-2s. And I'll do a 1-2 with a little shank off the back end sometimes. Or, you know, most of the time with this particular pattern, I'll either do a single with a small mouse, right? So I'll do like a one knot with a 25 millimeter shank. Small mouth, different game. Like I have to upsize it. Right. And they sure. bite the head all the time right. and they never swoop at it. They're not eating it. They Same inhale with it. They right. bite totally different. So, you know, that's another thing. You got to tie with some purpose. So when you're going out to these environments that you're fishing these things, hopefully they're not sitting in a box because 80% of the flies tied never get fished. But hey, you know, anybody's not fishing their flies can send them to me. Right. Yeah. You know? I'll try them. I'll right. swim them. Right. right. Straight. Me, up. I won't. I say leave that at home. <laughs> what did I say once to to a customer of mine? Unless that has Grandpappy's last hair in it, don't bring it. <laughs> Another famous. Oh, racism. it scares the bejesus out of us. <laughs> oh, I got these flies I tied. Yeah. Oh yeah. Leave them in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I got you covered, oh, here, buddy. We call it uh, Antiques Roadshow here. but <laughs> We do have the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> we'll, we'll get this, and oh Matt will gosh. be like, dude, we got an Antiques Roadshow on us. <laughs> it's like, hey, I just like uncovered this from my uncle's attic, and uh -huh. they bring in this. I and, unburied you know, these flies. <laughs> and it's like a bamboo rod, and they're like, is, is it worth thousands of dollars? And you're looking uh, at it going like, this came from the Sears and Robot catalog. Do you, do you grow tomatoes, sir? <laughs> yeah, you use that for us. Like, you should use it for a steak, because that's about all it's good for at this point. Unless I like when, they I like when they've they been, like, putting a spinning reel on them, and <laughs> yeah, it's bent. It's, it's like, pre-bent. The whole bamboo Yeah, the whole rod's bent. bent. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah is this worth thousands is of dollars? Is your grandfather a pole vault champion? <laughs> <laughs> and you, they open up the case and moths fly out and you're like oh it smells like just somebody's attic and you're like no please don't sir all right in case you missed that first one <laughs> all right. this is basically going to be pretty similar in construction <laughs> putting the buck hair back here lay that buck down lay that funky music Russ, boy. <laughs> Using a burgundy thread? Is that wine? It's a, a downtown brown. Oh. Mm. 
I just match it to the Canadian crawler, you know, whatever. Bucks baits. Yeah. Bait man out. It's the guy who did the ice fishing reports all winter for. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's <laughs> to fly a drone over all the lakes. You know, my son's going to drone school. That's excellent. He could be the next bait man. He could be the next bait man. Yeah. Just do a report. Hey, I'm sitting here at wherever on the lake and... You know, it seems to be an open 100-yard area out there. Be careful. Don't go out there at night. Take your uh, ice picks. <laughs> right. Run them through your shoulders. How many times have you fall through this year, Russ? None. You know why? Because you're smart. Because I'm older. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, your frontal lobe is finally developed. Yeah. <laughs> oh they say it till 25 but in my case i'm a late developer you know, myself yeah. dude i can totally <laughs> agree i can totally no i did not fall through the ice wow do you wear a float coat i wear the float too yeah yeah, yeah. smart you know that mean you know what that means you have something to live for right right Fricky. she uh oh you know, she she uh She's pretty amazing. But I wouldn't want to jeopardize her either. And we actually like to go together. And if something ever happened, she would be so terrified she'd never go again. Just so you know, that was a low hanging curveball. And you hit it out of the park. <laughs> Soft toss. <laughs> love it. And Brooke's over there, like, oh, my heart. <laughs> I love him so much. So well, I see you uh, kind of changed up the colors on that. I did. I changed up the color just to change up the color. Because you don't tie the same fly twice or what? No, you know, I mean, I just want to kind of stay. in. And, and you, again, you know, you can move right through the season with this fly. Too. Right. You can tie them, you know, a lot bigger. You can tie them with whatever material that you have on hand. You know, I think this one I, is going to be similar to the one I'm doing, but that just has some regular. Hold it right down by the vise. There this one go. has just regular flashaboo back there. There's some copper. There yeah, now. there's like a little copper flashaboo in there. And it does kind of, you know. Come close to a sculpin too, which never hurts this time of year. No. I think I could do this for steelhead. Oh, yeah. I haven't caught one on it yet, but it's very doable. But there is more crawler influence on the rivers without those things. You know, when Jay, Jay Niederstadt and I used to guide together, he would tie up these big, like we get the, you know, spring thaw, right? Yeah. And he would tie literally like uh, these big bunny leech flies that look like a crawler and he right. would crush a steelhead on right. it. Yeah. I think he's tuned yeah. in tonight. Oh, actually. And, and oh my gosh, there is, there is <laughs> Jay is t tuned in. Maybe he's still tuned in. I he was know. the very first comment we'll of the so, evening. So, you know, Jay, Jay is another one of those guys like you, Ross. He's just oh, fishy. Yeah. He thinks no, like good. a fish, like Jay, Jay. Actually, fish, he called me a while back and we were talking a little bit about the, 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 the fiber, fiber poles. Oh, gotcha. No, Jay's a great guy. Pity mo. Don't get me on that one. Uh, oh, jeez. Although um, Matt was just up on the Upper Manistee this week, and it looks like the blooms have subsided a bit. Nice. A little bit through the That's winter. Good. That's good. Yeah, we had a so, decent, decent day. And Jay sent me a bunch of data that said that most of the Montana streams have didimo. So anybody yeah. from Oh, yeah, Michigan, it's definitely not killing the trout because uh, Arkansas sauce has it. Yeah, so everybody just there, make you know. sure wherever you fish, you know, let's uh, let's pretend it's like when we were kids, and it's like that person that you sleep with, you're sleeping with all the other people <laughs> that they have slept with, right, yeah. in their entire life. So now it's like all those rivers you fish, you're fishing that same river, and you're right. taking those same germs. Right. So we want to save our rivers. Could be, yeah. <laughs> you know. Probably I wish, cut, I wish I'm the probably ducks, I cut I mean, that one out. Indiana, no, that was like, no, as soon as yeah. the ducks start washing their feet, then I right. think we got the it. The herons. Yeah, and um, turtles. Yeah. Beavers, deer, migratory birds. Migratory, yeah. Yeah, you know. When they start washing their feet, then, you know, then it's probably more important. But I know they soak their feet in dawn for at least do. 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, they do. They just fly over that. What's that town in Ohio? <laughs> oh my just go right to the, <laughs> the polluted water right. why is it always ohio that's uh, bad hmm. it's bad everybody lives down river from somewhere you know think about it that way it's like why is canada's water so clear well they're up river from us 
Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that rocket <and> science. <laughs> How many towns are up there? A few. Well, how many are... You know? you know, the only bad thing from Canada is all the smoke that blows north from our factories right. and gives them acid rain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't hear about acid rain anymore. What did it do? Gosh. Disappear? Right. <laughs> yeah, scrubbers really worked. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh political. My. Politically correct here. Yes. Oh, Diddy Mo. But yes, there is Diddy Mo in many ovarias. Oh. None of which have zero trout anymore. So. No, no. All the Montana streams still have really good trout fishing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Telling you. Superior. It's going to bounce back. It, yeah, of course. It's just, it's a, it's a bloom. It's an algae. It's there. I don't believe that it was maybe transmitted from somebody's waiter boot or boat, but. I suppose but we do all need Theoretically. To. Could have, could we have do happened. need to, to all do our part. Right. So what size beads are you putting on here? Five, man. <laughs> and then until he fires them. Until he fires them. Didn't you catch them. that? I'll do three on this one just to make sure, just so I have. Do you, you just know, shark tank? Just to really, gonna, really throw people off. You're going to shark tank them? I'll oh, you're throwing it. three on there? Yeah. Three on the tree? You know, yeah. Because, you know, I mean... Yeah, I don't use the tanks. That's another thing. Tanks. Tanks aren't a river. Ain't gonna help you. Come on, arthritis. Yes. Ross, your nails look good. Did did you have a manicure before this? <laughs> Chewed them right off. I couldn't, you know. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I broke them so bad during the ice fishing <laughs> season. You, I mean, dude, for your fingers I had a for cut this of, time of year, I'm like, I had dude, cut those look good. It's my omegas, Brooke says. <laughs> oh, uh, it's a healthier diet. Uh -huh. I love it. Yeah. She takes such I'm good a vegetable care of area me. now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know I was a vegetable area, did you? I love it. Now, I could do three of the four millimeters on here, too. You know, just to make sure I really throw people for a curveball. I have the same fly with three beads. Now, now Russ was using orange beads. Do you have those orange beads in stock? How many calls do you think I'm going to get tomorrow, Russ? <laughs> oh, a yeah, lot. I want those orange beads. Yeah, I want those orange, those orange beads that that kid was using on the fly tying thing yesterday. Really, it's just because what I have. You think I'm really going to come up with the best color combo that I'm running every day on that river? Negative. So I'm surprised at this point you don't throw some of that loon... Um, stuff on there to like really wrap that down don't need it lifespan isn't long enough for this thing <laughs> it's gonna end up in a fish or a log here's what's gonna happen guy's <laughs> gonna come down around the bend and he's gonna cast it and just, yeah. <laughs> point and pull what do you mean you're not gonna go get it nope Shh. ignorance should not be rewarded and then I'll give him the other box that's not the A box, and I'll go to the B box. So he's on the B team. Yes. He's not that, varsity. That's what happens. He's JV very immediately. Easy. Happens very easily. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. yeah. You know, usually I give him about three flies. I always tie a fly for my trip. That's the that's the one guarantee that I always do. <laughs> I, I always flies. tie a brand new fly. Minty, minty, minty condition. And then I have the B box. You can still have... smell the Sally Hansons right. on this fly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And yes, it still catches fish. It's amazing. Because huh. that UV resin doesn't smell at all. <laughs> so I'm going to stop that halfway. And so I'll is go. this like a crawler laying eggs? No. But it looks like that. Kind of it's like the only that. proper place to ever fish a bead, <clears throat> or ever the use of a bead in fly fishing is strictly right there. That's where it's used. I would absolutely agree with that. Now, if you're running a weight-propelled system, then that's different. But in actual fly fishing... I fish a lot of flies like that in Alaska with the in beads in the middle. So on this and one, I'm going to put lead eye. and eggs. Yeah, put lead eye in there. Lead eye on bottom of hook. And you could tie that first in there if you wanted to, or after you join your fly together. 
And that's on the bottom of the hook? Yep, bottom of the hook. And those are the smalls? These are extra small. Extra small, double pupil, hairline, I guess. lead eyes. Matt knows. I just said, oh, yeah, these red would be pretty cool. And it'd be, they're nice. Just called Casey. Hey, grab me some eyes. Yeah, I did. Then I realized they weren't painted or nothing. Oh. What did, you know. But he did deliver. He delivered the eye. I'll do black on this. We did have a question about two hooks on longer flies for trout versus a single fly on long hooks. Well, where where you can use them, two hooks are better than one. There's a reason why they made a Rapala. Right. <laughs> Fred's, Fred's like walking around. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah, no. no I, I mean, like the two hook fly. The The biggest key with it is making sure you get your spacing. And like I said, I, this one I mixed up. I did a three three bead. But you, you really have to play with the what the what the fish are doing. It's a hard lesson to learn when you're only getting one or two bites a day. Right. But you know, rest assured if you do have either a two bead or a three bead space with that five millimeter on this particular style pattern, it's a very light pattern. There's not a lot for the fish to inhale. And trout really don't do the bass thing either. So it's right. they bite totally different. So and you're taking an effective bass fly and you're trying to do a trout with it, you may lose a bunch of them. Or an effective pike fly and try to fish a bass or a trout with it. Right. You may lose a lot. That's why I like these light wire hooks. They just grab easier. And the more hook you have in grabbing area, the better off you are. So Right. And what Russ is referencing there, we'll keep watching him rap here, is bass tent, especially smallmouth, will attack the head. Right. And you can get away with a sizable single hook up at the front. Right. Even with a fly that has a ton of movement at the back. Right. And trout eat different. Trout are a almost sometimes unpredictable where they're going to eat. And that's, you know, we, we used to have these really long hooks. I'll admit I wasn't part of that. <laughs> that was a little before me. And but you can go back and uh, look at. I'm trying to remember her name. She's very famous. Carrie for, Stevens. Thank you, Carrie Stevens fl flies, and we'd lose a lot of fish on those really, really long shanks. They have a ton of leverage to try and throw that fly at that point, and a second hook gives you movement, gives you a little bit of security, and allows you to catch, you know, kind of diversify your hooking ability, if you will, with a trout. Right. How's that? Perfect. Fair? Pretty good. Man. Okay. Pretty not, good. Not bad. And, you know, I mean, a lot of times, because you can do this fly with just, instead of the rear hook, you can put a shank there in what I call a flicker tail, where you would just attach the shank with a piece of mono. Yep. Tie this exact portion on a shank, and you would have a single hook fly. And you could do that on any size fly, any size hook, really. But it shines a little better for bass, I think where I don't want to deal with two hooks on a bass, basically. Becomes kind of more of a hazard than it's worth. But for trout, I like the security of having two hook. Proper spaced, you know, you're going to have, no matter what that fish does to it, whether it wheels on it, comes at it with a closed mouth, circles around it, you know. Whatever that fish does, if it's close to it, you still have a chance. That's why I like to figure eight my trout flies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to that, we're done. Like the whole musky thing. All right. So what I'm going to do here is you can take any material you want. Um, I'm using like a synthetic bunny, but any of the like the thinner, smaller bunny strips. Or even the squirrel stuff. Sure. Squirrel. The bunny brushes from MFC. Anything like that. This is just a synthetic version. I'm just gonna figure eight this through the through the, the eyes there. And we'll get a nice little head on there. I'll do like two wraps 
in the back of it and then just kind of swoop it through. Super simple fly to produce and to fish and to throw a few away. And pretty dang effective too. Last year was probably is my best foot my best fly last year. Do you, you do you like that synthetic rabbit just because of less water retention? I I like Lighter it because it doesn't have the pelt. Yeah, I do. I, Let, I do. no hide. Right. I mean, that's okay. that basically why I think it shines. Okay. Is this part of you becoming a vegan? Yeah, it could be. Hmm. You know, when right when they ban rabbit use, ban chickens. The kinder, gentler Russ. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh huh. Just get in that front seat and tell me how gentle I is. <laughs> Today brought to you by Kleenex. <laughs> you gonna make me cry, Russ, when I get in the front of your boat? <laughs> no, sir, I'd advise you go with someone a little nicer. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It's funny because people think I'm kidding. That's <laughs> <laughs> so true. But it's so true. Matt you says it's so true. Oh, no, but I know, yeah. The funny thing is, whenever you say something with a smile, people think you're kidding. I know. That's right. No, no, I'm not. That's serious. Oh, my gosh. That's Did you serious. take your chair at all today, sir? <laughs> You know when the flies go when the flies get you're gonna be I can't even finish when the flies end up in the tree you gotta you gotta make sure you remind them I'll never get those minutes back sir I'll never get that time back. He even says it to me. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'll never get those hours back. Are you gonna cast like that? We're going to just go right to the boat launch. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're going to suffer all day. <laughs> could be your first cast. Could be your last. <laughs> Keep casting. Keep casting and write that check. Keep casting. Oh, my gosh. I love it. But, yeah, there's there's a lead version of it with three beads. You know, and like I said, you can tie this in, in any number of colors and use anything that you can wrap on a hook. And there's two very quick versions of doing this. You know, I have them in, in every color of the rainbow. Did even a minnow version. I like it. Did a one with that squishy <laughs> chenille. And you could probably use wool there too. Right? Yeah, you could use wool, you could use deer, you can use anything, call it a different thing if you want. But this is you know, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And really all it is is just figure eight and that through the the eyes. This one has chains. If you talk about just diversity, it's the same exact pattern, just with different materials, different weighting systems, different line. You know, you can really fish this thing from eight inches long if you want. I only fish it, I pretty much fish these about maximum size for trout, but I will do some shank ones this year for, really? for bass. Yeah. Zero reason why they won't pretty much shine for for species in the river, especially in the spring here. No, I mean that, those are great patterns. This is the most I've laughed at a live fly time. The most well, you know I've what? been stressed at the beginning and then like uh, total uh, just. You got to laugh. It's fly laugh. tying. It's fly Dude, time. It's fly time. How, how, it's fishing fun. It's not right. arts and crafts. We you, put the fun back in fly fishing. You have, to, the you have to, you know. You have to laugh a little. You can't take yourself that seriously. Fly tying. Seriously, dude. It's like, you come know, on. It's, it's appreciate, our... <laughs> appreciate everybody watching, but, it's fun. you know, I mean, it's it's just a means of production. I say it all the time everywhere I go. It's a means of production. You know, fish these flies. That It's it's the last advantage you have fishing these days. Right. You know, if all casting's the same, all rowing's the same, this really, it comes from this vice. The vice is where you get all your power in your mind to come up with things that are going to solve a problem for you. You know, so that's, it's really just a tremendous advantage in, in fishing and something, you know, that I, I tie flies every day. I tie flies every day, um, still to this day. And I'll tie flies every day for a trip too. I at least tie two. The guy's going to get a new fly every single day. You know, probably something that the world might have never seen before. So, yeah, and it's something 
I mean, there's nothing more exciting than going to the river yourself. And you're fishing for your on your day off, and you tied yourself a new fly. Absolutely, right? That's right. It, it's you can't look you can't look past the new fly at the flies you've had in your box for you know months and months right. and months. You it's can't it, look never, past dude, the new one. There's no point you in can't stocking a box full nope. of nonsense. Nope. You're better off tying three good ones for the day. The I'm gonna go day. home right now, and I'm gonna tie some flies for my trip tomorrow. Right? right. You know, like I do it every night. Yeah. It's like. It's what you do before yeah, you, you go to, to bed, because you, right? That's and the, it's like it's it's part of the the preparation, right? And you know, it's part of a, as a guide, you want to do that, you right? You have to. I mean, and if there, who? I mean, honestly, if I, Larry I and really, I used to do this, you all have the time. to tie flies. Have if to you're tie a guide flies. and you're not tying flies, it's, and then if you're not fishing something new every day. Like, and your client asks you, oh, have you ever caught a fish on this? No, because I've never tied it before, but right. today is going to be the day. Right. Right? It, and a lot of it, you know, in the streamer game is, is strictly mental. So if you have a fly that, oh, man, my guy really likes looking at that fly. Right. He's fishing it pretty good. He's casting it. He has some confidence he has in some your confidence. head. confidence. Yeah. It, it, that confidence makes a difference. Confidence is key. It makes a difference. No, but it's all part of the process, yeah. right? Like, it is seriously all part of the process. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's all part of the, like, for me. You know, like like you as a guide, like you go home, you have your got to tie a fly. Like, how do you not tie flies? Oh, it's crazy. It's I mean, I, I I go out of my way to like make sure that the people that I actually fish with in other parts of the country, like, hey man, do you tie flies? You know, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, because it's like that big of a deal, right? Because if that guy's going to a bin, right, you know he's got the fly, right. You know, right. people, no, yeah. 50 so people have the same fly. There's only a couple hundred fish. There's only a hundred deer in that woods. I'll you never know? forget I was on the Madison years and years and years ago, right? And I'm, and I'm, I'm working for Sims at the time, and we're doing this thing. And uh, Chris Martin's guiding for Kelly at the time, right? And uh, Chris was like, dude, what's going on? I'm like, man, we can't catch fish. We, I've got this, like, compared on sulfur. And he literally hands me a fly that is like two color shades different than the ones that are in the fly bins. He's like, let me see what you're throwing. He's like, yeah, this is off. And he <laughs> gave me one fly and we caught fish on that fly until we lost it. Right. And that was the only thing that worked. That was like cracking the code. Yeah. And that's like why you hire a good guy. Chris <laughs> yeah, that, Martin was like, save my day. That right. Like, that's, and you I know. was like, not even trying to, gu- you know, I'm not guiding obviously, but I'm, I'm you know, like out there fishing, but he saved the day of me catching fish. I'm right. like, how do you catch fish on the mess? It's like this. And I mean, I'm not kidding you. It was like a two shade difference. Right. That's, that's, that's the difference. how so dialed in you get. It's like today. If you're on the water, right. You know, you're on the water every day. You're like you water. don't want to take a day off. Like I don't want at this point in time with my fish season, I don't want to take a day off. You know, I'll come in at night and do like what I need to do with Matt. Like Matt, you need to come in and help me pack orders, <laughs> whatever. I'll do it, but I don't want to take a day off because now you get dialed in and you're like, oh, I got to. I, well, this is happening. I can see this. Right. I can see these fries. They're right. getting crushed. Like I'm pretty sure. And then when you crack that code, you're like, yeah, right. rock it out. But that that's what it's and about. And then your clients are like, dude, that rocks. Right. What are you using? The old guide, you know. That's what. He, that's what you're using. That's why you're a guide. Yeah. What are you right? using? A guide. It's not about you know. You're using someone who's out there all the time. You know, that's what you're using. You're using. You a know, guide. when I was a kid, I used to take my Rapalas and I would color them up. Right. I take a like a mag. I take like a Sharpie, magic markers, and I color them up. And you'd catch more fish than the guy on your lake. You know, because I didn't know how to tie flies then. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't a fly fisherman. And you like, dude. What are you doing coloring purple on that? <laughs> right. They know. haven't seen it. They haven't seen it, and I'm catching more fish than you. <laughs> right. There's something to be said for that. you got to tie a fly. It's and the last advantage you got. <laughs> if all rowing if all rowing's the same, if all, rowing's, if all guides suck at rowing, and all fly fishermen cast suck at casting, the only thing you have is a fly. Period. If everybody sucks at rowing, and everybody sucks at casting, the only thing you got... That separates fly. you and success is the fly. Right. Right on. Hey, I mean, thanks a lot, Ross. Man, we've had a blast. This is a really fun doing one. this tonight. Hey, this you, was a. You sound. You sound. Are you melancholy? Yeah. I think you're kind of wrapping up, the right? wrapping the season up. Wrapping the season up. I think Matt's a little melancholy here. Everyone, I'm gonna have to take this over, because uh, you know, 
you know, we've overcome some serious adversity tonight, and, and uh, we're just we couldn't be more happy to to, to close out our season uh, with Russ and uh, live fly tying. So thanks everyone for tuning in um, all all winter, and hope you go back and watch these videos afterwards, and uh, yeah. check out our YouTube channel. It's time check to go out our fishing, podcast. everyone. And guess what? It's springtime. Yep. The bluebirds are here. The robins are here. The red winged blackbirds are here. It yep. is It is time to get out and Check go out fishing. the podcast. We got a new one. Joe and I recorded one yesterday. I'll try and drop it tomorrow or Friday. We'll get to it. Sorry. Uh, I know we're inconsistent, but you hey, all got we're Everyone out there is just... Busy. Thank you for that. Thank you thanks for your business. everyone so much for the support we've had. Tons of people come up to us at the show at... You know, just call and say thanks, and it feels good. It feels like we're doing something right. So, all right, awesome, Russ. Anything you you want to plug? Yeah, dude. Fair <laughs> game. <laughs> no, I did. I kind of hit my guy today, so I'm <laughs> all right. pretty happy. The amount of hashtags we're getting through here, we're having like a hashtag contest. Uh, yeah. What is it? Billy Bob, Billy Bob Wichita's winning. <laughs> yeah, that's this a good Billy one. Bob yeah, that's, Wichita. That's a good one. That is a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> Try it with ha- pointy hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. You know, everybody uh, likes trout with pointy hats. Right. Uh, and then the one with the uh, grandpappy's hair is yeah. is well, that's classic. T- that's is a classic. I, actually, one of my customers made me a bumper sticker that said that. <laughs> Are there more? No, I think oh. there, there's only one. But I could probably contact him. No, well, he may be tuned in. Do you think that. I can license that for the shop? <laughs> use that? I mean, I would love that. I think you know. I think people would buy that. I th- <laughs> unless I th- it has Grandpappy's last hair in it. Don't bring it. <laughs> I like it. That's I it. think that's better than uh, the the bumper sticker. My one of my clients gave me. You know, it's not the fly you suck. Yeah, that you could know, be too. Like, That's that could be. But that, I like that. If less, it's tied with your grandpappy's <laughs> last hair. Don't bring it. It's true. True. Maybe we'll have to add I that to our confirmation to letter. Yes. <laughs> for <laughs> God trips. Oh my gosh! I'd like to thank everybody for watching though out there and yeah. putting up with the difficulties of the morning or in the beginning there. Yeah, you kind of have to read through all the shenanigans, but and yeah. Awesome evening. We saw some fantastic flies. Tie some flies. Get out there. Get fishing. And uh, check out Russ. Uh, I'll put some links in the in the description below. He's active on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and uh, just a great guy. Tons of knowledge. And we really, really appreciate him. One of my support. famous, favorite and famous humans on earth right here. Infamous. Russ <laughs> Madden. All right, we're rolling out, everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna cue the jams, and we're gonna let's pump up. We're gonna fade to black. <laughs>